Chinese robots have taken over the moon. For many years now, and here's the big question, what exactly have they found up there? These robotic explorers have been roaming through regions that no human or spacecraft had ever reached before, scooping up rock and dust samples and sending them all the way back to Earth for analysis. And here's where things get interesting, because inside those samples, scientists discovered something completely new. So what is it? Why didn't we see it during the Apollo missions decades ago? And more importantly, could this tiny discovery reshape how we understand the moon and even influence life on Earth in the future? This is where the story truly begins, and it's far more surprising than anyone expected. So now that we know China has uncovered something unusual on the moon, the next big question is this. Why is the moon such a mystery in the first place? The more scientists study it, the stranger it becomes, because our Earth doesn't behave like the other rocky planets around us. Take Venus, for example. It's nearly identical to Earth in size and weight, yet it has no moon at all. Then look at Mars. It's smaller, only about half the size of Earth, but it does have two moons, except they're tiny. One is only around 22 kilometers across, the other just about 12 kilometers. You could literally fit both inside a single city on Earth. But here's where things get even stranger. When we zoom out to the gas giants, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, they all have big moons, but that makes sense. These planets are enormous. Jupiter alone weighs more than 318 times as much as Earth. Of course, it can hold a large moon in place. So why does Earth, a relatively small, rocky planet, have one giant moon that rivals the moons of the gas giants? That's not normal. That's not expected. And that's exactly why understanding the moon is so important. Because the more we uncover about where the moon came from and how it formed, the closer we get to answering a much deeper question, why is Earth the way it is, and how did it become so different from every other world around it? And once scientists realized just how unusual Earth and its giant moon really are, they had to ask a bold question. Could the Earth and the moon actually be made from the same original material? That idea first emerged during the Apollo missions, back in the late 1960s and early 1970s, when astronauts brought home large amounts of lunar rocks and dust. When researchers compared those samples to rocks on Earth, they found something shocking. They were almost identical. Not just similar, chemically identical, as if the Earth and Moon were born from the very same source. So what kind of event could possibly create that? This is where the leading theory, known as the Big Splash, comes in. According to this idea, billions of years ago, Earth was struck by a rogue planet about the size of Mars. The impact was so violent that it liquefied both bodies. A massive amount of Earth's molten material was blasted into space while the bulk of the impacting planet sank deep into Earth's core. The debris that splashed outward eventually cooled, clumped together, and became what we now call the Moon, a sort of mini-Earth that separated very early in our planet's history. To test this idea, scientists fed all known evidence into a powerful supercomputer that ran millions of simulations. And amazingly, one scenario reproduced everything we know about the Earth-Moon relationship the matching rocks, the size of the moon, its orbit, even its unusual density. That simulation became the strongest support for the Big Splash theory. But here's the twist. Even with all that evidence, the Big Splash still isn't fully proven. New discoveries, especially the ones coming from China's lunar missions, are starting to reveal details that don't quite fit the old explanation. So the real question now is, what piece of the moon's origin story are we still missing? And this is exactly why, over the past five years, China has stepped into the spotlight of lunar exploration. They've been pouring resources into powerful rockets, precision landers, and highly advanced robotic rovers, all with one mission in mind, to uncover the moon's true origin. But why is China so determined to solve this cosmic puzzle now? And what have they found that no one else ever has? So if China wants to uncover the moon's true origin, the best place to start is the one region no human had ever reached before, the far side of the moon. And here's something many people still get wrong. The far side is not the dark side. It receives plenty of sunlight, 
it just never faces the Earth. That alone makes it mysterious, but what China discovered there is what truly shocked scientists. With the Chang'e 4 mission, China became the first nation in history to land on the far side, and immediately one thing stood out. This hidden hemisphere looks seven, nothing like the moon we see in the night sky. The near side, the familiar face we've looked at for thousands of years, is covered with dark volcanic plains, smooth, wide, and relatively flat. But the far side, it is rough, jagged, and absolutely loaded with impact craters. There are almost no volcanic seas at all. That tells scientists something critical. These two sides formed under completely different conditions, and discovering why could rewrite everything we think we know about the moon. To dig deeper into this mystery, the Chang'e 4 lander deployed the U-2-2 rover, sending it on a journey across the ancient von Karman crater. This massive depression sits inside an even larger impact basin created nearly 4 billion years ago, one of the oldest and largest scars on the entire moon, stretching wider than the country of India. And here's why scientists are obsessed with this area. A meteorite powerful enough to carve a basin that size would have punched through the moon's outer crust, bringing deep hidden materials up to the surface, and that's exactly what happened. While traveling across the crater floor, U-22 made a groundbreaking discovery. Samples of rock believed to have originated from the moon's mantle, the layer beneath the crust. No Apollo astronaut ever found mantle material. In fact, this is the first time in human history that scientists have ever held evidence pulled from so deep inside the moon. So naturally, the next question becomes, if the far side reveals the moon's inner layers, what other secrets might still be buried there waiting to be found? But U-22's discoveries didn't stop there. In late 2021, the rover captured a strange image on the far side of the moon, something that looked like a perfectly shaped cube sitting on the horizon. Immediately, the world exploded with theories. Was it a structure? A long-lost artifact? A sign of intelligent life? For a moment, it felt like a real-life scene from 2001, a space odyssey. But as U-22 slowly made its way closer over several weeks, the truth finally came into focus. The mysterious cube was nothing more than a rock. The odd shape had been created by low-resolution images, square digital pixels, and dramatic shadows cast across the lunar terrain. In other words, our eyes were tricked, but the global attention it caused proved one thing. The moon still has the power to captivate our imagination. And that fascination pushed China to take the next giant step. In the year 2024, the Chang'e 6 mission returned to the far side, this time not just to explore but to collect samples and bring them back to Earth. This was a historic moment. For the first time ever, humanity obtained physical material from the moon's hidden hemisphere, a region untouched and unsampled throughout all of Apollo history. These far side samples hold answers to questions scientists have been asking for decades. What secrets lie beneath those ancient craters? How different is the far side from the face we see every night? And most importantly, what new clues about the moon's true origin might be locked inside these untouched grains of dust and rock? The deeper we look, the more the moon surprises us. Up to this point, the far side has revealed mysteries no one expected. But to understand how groundbreaking China's discoveries really are, we need to compare them to what came before. And here's something most people don't realize. The Apollo missions barely scratched the surface of the moon. The astronauts could only land in small, flat regions along the equator because those were the only safe spots for their equipment. In total, across all six successful landings, humans explored only about 25 square kilometers. To put that in perspective, that's just one-fifth the size of Disney World. Imagine aliens landing there, walking around for a day, and then claiming they understood the entire Earth. That's essentially what we did with the moon. China, however, is approaching the moon with a very different strategy. Instead of sticking to safe, flat planes, they're targeting geologically complex and scientifically valuable locations. A perfect example is the Chang'e 5 mission, which touched down on a volcanic dome, an area no human had ever sampled, and what it found changed everything. Among the material returned to Earth was the youngest lunar rock ever discovered, 
dating back around 2 billion years. That might sound old, but compared to typical Apollo samples, which were often more than 3 billion years old, it's surprisingly young. This single discovery proved something major. The moon stayed volcanically active for far longer than scientists believed. For decades, we assumed the moon cooled quickly and remained geologically dead. But now, those assumptions are being rewritten. So the question becomes, if one mission could overturn decades of certainty, what other long-held beliefs about the moon are waiting to be challenged next? And as if rewriting the moon's volcanic history weren't enough, the Chang'e 5 mission delivered something even more surprising, a discovery so rare that it instantly captured the attention of scientists worldwide. Inside the returned samples, researchers identified a brand new mineral never seen before on the moon or on Earth. They named it Changesite, a tiny transparent crystal smaller than the width of a human hair. But the real excitement wasn't about how it looked, it was about what it contained. Changesite held traces of helium-3, one of the rarest elements in our solar system. And here's why that matters. Helium-3 is considered a potential fuel for future nuclear fusion, an energy source that could one day provide massive power with zero radioactive waste. The moon has plenty of helium-3 because its surface is constantly bombarded by solar wind. Meanwhile, Earth has almost none thanks to our protective magnetic field that blocks those particles. Now, fusion reactors capable of using helium-3 don't exist yet, but if humanity ever develops that technology, helium-3 could revolutionize clean energy forever. So the discovery raises a huge question. Could the moon one day become the key to solving Earth's energy challenges? China's sample suggests that possibility is closer than we once believed. And just when scientists thought the Chang'e 5 samples couldn't get any more surprising, they revealed something no one expected to find in that location, water. But not the kind of water researchers had been searching for in the frozen shadows of polar craters. No, this water came from the side of a volcano, a place flooded with sunlight. That immediately raised a huge question. How could water survive in such a warm and exposed environment? The breakthrough came when scientists examined a new mineral called ULM-1, a hydrated salt with water molecules locked tightly inside its crystal structure. This wasn't just hydrogen or oxygen showing up separately. It was a full H2O molecule, preserved inside the mineral like a message sealed in stone. And that changed everything. Because if water can be detected in a sunlit volcanic region, then it suggests something far bigger. Water might be scattered across the entire lunar surface, not just hiding in rare pockets of eternal shadow. Suddenly, the moon begins to look far less dry and far more promising than we ever imagined. And here's why that matters. Water is the single most valuable resource for building a human base. If water is truly widespread on the moon, how soon could humans establish permanent lunar settlements? This discovery doesn't just rewrite science textbooks. It reshapes our vision of humanity's future beyond Earth. So now it becomes clear why China is investing so heavily in the moon. Their goal isn't just scientific discovery, it's preparation for human habitation. Every rover, every lander, every sample they bring back is a piece of knowledge needed to build future lunar bases. Unlike the Apollo missions, which lasted only a few days at a time, a long-term presence requires understanding water sources, minerals, geology, and even energy potential. And right now, China is leading that charge mapping out the moon with more detail and ambition than any nation before. Which raises the final inevitable question. Could China be the first country to establish a permanent human settlement on the moon?